On this page, we're going to learn how to create our very own data type that doesn't already exist in Snap. I believe in the previous video, I kept referring to these list items as points because that is what they were representing. But if I were to send this code to another programmer, that person would probably have no idea what these numbers inside of these lists represent. It's not immediately obvious. So in order to solve this readability problem, we're going to have to create our very own data type. Data types are how we classify data in computer science. For example, if we have a variable that stores only true or false, then its data type is known as Boolean. But if we have a bunch of numerical digits, we might classify that as a number, or an integer, or a float, or a double, depending on the language that we're using. If instead I have a string of letters, then we might classify that as text in Snap. In other languages, it might be called a string, and if we have just one letter, it might be a character. Classifying data by its type can be very helpful when we're manipulating and working with that data. So we can diagnose and prevent future errors by using data types. Just to give an example, imagine you try to multiply the number 23 by the text hello world. If you try running it, you're going to get NAN, which stands for not a number. So that error could be useful when you're trying to figure out why something might not work. In Snap, we already have some built-in data types, including numbers, text, Boolean values, lists, and a few others that you can see on screen. In the Operators palette, we do have a block that can tell us if a specific value is a specific data type. So for example, this block is 5 a number, it'll return true because 5 is a number. But if I change the input to banana, and I try to see if that's a number, it's going to report false. Now, if I change it to a different data type that's built into Snap, such as text, is banana a text or is banana text, that is true. Now, if I try putting in a number, is 3 a text, that's false. This block allows us to tell if a value's data type matches what we're looking for or what we're expecting. In thinking out loud, Gamal and Betsy realize that while the code inside GoToPoint works, it's not very readable. Like, what does item 1 of point mean? Gamal suggests making an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate of block. These blocks will be abstractions of the more difficult to read item of blocks, but they'll work in exactly the same way. An abstraction allows us to simplify our code and make it more readable and understandable for anyone. Then Betsy suggests that we make a point block instead of having a list with two items inside of it which someone may not understand if they're just looking at it for the first time. But if we create a point block, it'll be easier to reason that the first value might represent x, and the second value might represent y. The point block will create a new point, or abstract data type, so we're going to call it a constructor. It constructs a new value. The x-coordinate and y-coordinate blocks will select a value from the point block, so we can call it a selector x-coordinate and y-coordinate of isn't creating a new data type. It's just extracting the value from our abstract data type. In for you to do number two, we have to improve our go to point block and use the selector that we're about to create. Now let's get started in creating our selector. And let's start with the x-coordinate of block. So I'm going to make a block, right clicking in the scripting area. And this is going to be an operator because you guys can see it's light green and it's going to be a reporter, and I'm going to name it x-coordinate of. Now, I'm going to use my shortcut that I showed you guys last video and put percent, and x-coordinate of is going to expect a point as an input or as an input parameter. So I'm going to name it point because it makes sense to do so, even though I haven't created it yet, but I will create it in just a few minutes. So point is going to have a data type of list because that is exactly what it expects to receive as an input. So I'm going to name it, or I'm going to define it as a list, and hit OK. And then what x coordinate of is going to do is it's going to take in that point and spit back the first item of that point list item. So I'm going to actually copy paste, copy my code from go to point that we created in the previous video, because it's going to work correctly if it says x coordinate of point. I'm going to hit apply, and I'm just going to test it out by putting one of these list items inside of my x coordinate of block, my selector. And now if I click on this reporter block, it should report back negative 10. 
and it does because that's what it says right here. If I make this negative uh, 65 and I run it, it should say negative 65 because it's only reporting the X coordinate of this list item. Okay, and we're gonna change this list to be a point in just a few minutes. Now for Y coordinate of, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. It's gonna be just named a little bit different, Y coordinate of, and I'm going to name that input parameter point once again, and I'm going to give it a type of list. So that parameter has to be a list. Otherwise, it's going to give me an error that the input parameter does not match what it's expecting. And for report, now I'm going to report back the second item of point. And I could test out my code by bringing over y coordinate of, throwing in this list item that I've brought in, and it should spit back 120, which is exactly what I expect. And if I change this value to 140 and I run it, it's only going to say or report back 140, which is the Y coordinate. Okay, great. My code works and now I can improve on go to point. I can do number two because all I have to do is now remove the item of block and instead put the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of blocks inside of my go to point block. And I can drag in that point whatever the input is, and we're gonna be able to correctly take out or extract the values that we want. So I could throw that out, and now my code is much more readable. Now lastly, we wanna create the point block. We wanna create this new constructor, because right now we keep using these lists that have two items inside, but someone reading this might not have any clue what they mean or what these numbers represent. So I'm gonna make the point constructor by making a block, going to operators, and once again, this is going to be a reporter. Now this point block is going to be a constructor of a brand new data type that does not exist in Snap right now. So I'm gonna name this data type point because it makes sense. These are points on a graph, even though you don't see the graph on the stage right now. So I'm gonna name it point, and it's gonna have two inputs, one that's gonna represent X, and one that's gonna represent Y, so I'm gonna use my little shortcut of percent %x percent %y to create the inputs. I'm gonna hit OK, and now point XY is going to return back the X value and the Y value as a list, because I'm basically abstracting or hiding the complexity like so. Except I don't wanna always return back negative 65 for the X and 140 for Y, I wanna actually just return what the values of X and Y are. Now I could go one step further because right now I haven't given X and Y a type because these do have types, these inputs. So I'm gonna give them a number type because each of them is a number. And what you'll notice if I just hit apply right now, I've only changed the type for the X value. And if you notice, inside of the point constructor, the input has a slightly different shape because now it's expecting a number. So if I try to type text here, it actually doesn't work. Whereas in the input for Y, I can type in letters, I can type in numbers, because right now it has no idea what to expect. But if I go to Y and I click on it and I hit this little arrow on the right, I can give it a type of number and now it should expect a number. And you saw that when I hit apply, this Y value or the space for Y just changed. So now, if I just change the values of point, let's say to negative 65 comma 140, and I click on this block, you can see that it reports back a list that has negative 65 in the X position and 140 in the Y position. So this is wonderful because now I can start using this new data type. Instead of using all of these list items that no one has any clue what they represent, I can start dragging in the numbers and putting points inside of this list instead of lists inside of a list. Actually, someone reading my code right now would understand, hey, we have a list of points. Whereas before, they could only see that we have a list of lists and that's not very clear. And just to show you guys that my selector works, I'm going to bring in the selector of Y coordinate of, and I'm gonna throw a point in there, and I'm just gonna put random values. Let's say 43 and 56. And when I click on this, it should report back 56, which it does, because that is the Y coordinate of this point. Now I've already updated my go to point block to expect these selectors, but what I have to do now is replace all of these lists with points.
And now that I've finished converting all of the lists inside of list to points, I can now test out my code and make sure that I go to each item of A. I've cleared the stage already. And I put my pen down. Let me just get rid of this. I put my pen down and I should be able to go to every single point inside of A just as I did before and have it work correctly. And it looks like it works. I actually didn't fix the bugs from the previous video, but hopefully you guys have done that already and your code works correctly. I will see you guys on page three.